Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Asmi Hongos, and today we're going to be looking at this very small and tiny DJI Pocket 2. More specifically, should you be getting it as a 2022 right from the get-go so I don't waste your time. Know that you should be adding this onto your toolkit if A, you are a parent, a iPhone vlogger, or you're trying to dive into the video space without breaking the bank. Why do I recommend to parents? Well, first, iPhones are expensive. Phones are expensive in general. They can be hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. You have very important stuff on there and your kid has the potential of accidentally deleting something or breaking your device. With the DJI Pocket 2, one, it's very, very small. Two, you'll know what your kids are recording constantly because everything gets saved onto a micro SD card which allows for you to extend the recording time. And if the kids do get bored with just recording, then there are a few prompts that the application provides. Second are individuals who want just a little bit more practice with a camera rather than just their smartphones. What I found the most interesting about the DJI Pocket is the amount of accessories that it has. You can add the do it all handle, which is chatches to the bottom and gives you way more accessibility like a headphone jack, Wi-Fi, stuff for live streaming, and that really expands the range of this camera. Plus there are ND filters. You can do so much with this and it really gives you the idea that comes with a cinema camera on a very small simulated scale. The extra handle though does cost quite a bit of money and I'm happy that they made it a separate purchase because the price point that this is set at at about $349 is already kind of steep, but not so steep that I would not recommend it. And then there's the iPhone vloggers. First, the DJI Pocket allows you to have expandable storage, which you can't do with your phones nowadays. The dynamic range is way, way better. The 3.0 tracking does a really fantastic job. As long as you're moving from right to left, it's like having your own personal assistant on the job while you're recording yourself and your B-roll is just gonna be way, way crispier. And the DJI Pocket has very incredible sound. It actually picks up audio in three different ways. There is soundtrack, audio zoom, and directional audio. Who would I not recommend this camera to? And that's anyone that's comparing it to a GoPro. A GoPro is one part and it's very well designed for very extreme conditions. The pocket is very fragile. <laughs> it's made out of plastic and it's also a gimbal. So there are a lot of moving parts in here that help stabilize the camera so you get a nice smooth pan. I personally would not wanna shake it all around, put it on top of your head, put it in front of a car, um, that's not what that's for. Even bringing it to the beach, I'd be a little bit cautious and would recommend cleaning it after as any small piece of dirt could damage the gimbal. And also this isn't water resistant to my knowledge. Now let's transition over to the features and I was blown away from the start, most importantly with autofocus. The Active 3.0 does a really great job tracking you from the very start once you open this device, it automatically locks onto you and follows you around. Also, the software does a really great job going from a very shadowy area to a very bright area. The roll off is just very, very nice. And the camera following you along, depending on your settings, is nice and smooth. Speaking of nice and smooth, there's also time lapses. It's built into the software and there are other several options. You can go up to 4K at 60 FPS. The software and the UI are extremely friendly as shown in the time-lapse feature. It lets you know if the camera is stable, how long you need to be placed in that particular setting, and the amount of shots and time it'll take to give you five to 10 seconds. It's an absolute no-brainer. The team did a really great job at putting this together for the average consumer. Time-lapses require photos, so you probably wanna know the specs that are inside. First and foremost, it has a 20 millimeter f1.8 lens 
a 64 megapixel CMOS sensor and a 93 degree view. The photo quality for me, it's not very impressive. I don't think that that's DJI's bread and butter, more specifically in this small body. To tack onto that, the low light performance on the sensor is not great in my view. I try to shoot a few YouTube videos and also at the moment, let's take a look at what it looks like from the studio. As you can tell, I am recording. It's doing a really great job tracking my face. And take note, I am actually using a soft box. So this is what it'll look like if it is properly lit in a room. If you go into a very dark area, the grain just gets pushed a lot, even though it has 64 megapixels. With all of this going on, you're probably wondering if the camera overheats and it does. You can immediately feel it once you go into 4K. For me personally, it didn't overheat to the point of failure, but if you put your hand in the middle of the camera, you can automatically tell that it's processing a lot of data. There is a touchscreen on this. It's mostly used for reference, and if you swipe in a particular manner, to the right are all your settings, to the left are the videos that you've taken, to the top are filters and pro mode settings. For me, specifically, I shot it in the DJI standard profile. You can go into log, but I don't know, most consumers aren't really gonna do that. They're just gonna set it to automatic and they go from there. And then on the bottom, you are able to move around the type of tracking. There are different stylistic choices that you can go with. That's what I also really enjoy about the camera, that you can combine these settings to make a different look every single time. You kind of can't get bored of it. And lastly, the debate of why should I even get this if I already have an iPhone? Well, your iPhone, <laughs> does not take extremely smooth video. While they do have a few features and you can do post warp stabilizing, it's not gonna compare to a device specifically made to take smooth shots. Just take a look at this comparison between my regular iPhone XR and this. This is a few miles apart, right? You can also buy a gimbal for your iPhone, but if we're looking at DJI's own iPhone gimbal, a, it's huge. Two, it's like a warrior weapon. <laughs> this is a nice, friendly device that will teach you how to use a gimbal properly. And try sticking one of DJI's gimbals in your pocket that is in this one. This is a camera that everyone should have in their pocket, no pun intended. But I'm really happy that I purchased this product and hopefully it's a line that DJI continues to follow. Let me know your thoughts down below. At the end of the day, thank you so much for your time and your attention. My name is Asmi Hongos and I'll catch you in the next one.